Hey there everybody, it's Adam here from Tesla Australia. Welcome back to another video and my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for joining me. Well, today is a pretty exciting day for actually a couple of different reasons. One, I woke up this morning to another software update notification where my Tesla Performance Model 3 has been upgraded to 2020.40.8. I was previously on 2020.40.4. Uh, this version's probably just bug fixes um, as we're going to be expecting. Um, unfortunately, no rewrite yet, but that is the other reason why today is an exciting day because hopefully some lucky people around the globe, probably in the US, uh, will start to see the FSD rewrite or autopilot rewrite start to make their way out to their cars. Elon has said it will be going out very slowly and to specific people, uh, but it is going to be a really exciting day and next few days seeing hopefully some videos come out uh, or at least some information come out around how the rewrite uh, is going and some of the features that we can expect to see down here in Australia when we start to get that rewrite software push down here. So let's have a look at the new software. So again, uh, version is version 10.2, 2020.40.8. Again, navigation data is still the same. So it'll be interesting to see if we get any further map upgrades in 2020 or if they get pushed out to next year. So let's have a look at the release notes. Again, as expected, nothing new here. So we do still have the speed assist improvements, which is the speed sign recognition. We have the priority Bluetooth device and the glove box pin. And more importantly for this release is that we have minor improvements and bug fixes. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna go for a bit of a drive around. I'm gonna take a slightly different route to the one I took when I first uh, tested uh, the speed signs up on the New South Wales Central Coast, uh, just to see if we can see anything different uh, on this new software version. We will also go through and do a bit of a autopilot test as well, just to see if we can see any improvements or changes there in the behavior. But specifically, if there are going to be changes, I'd probably expect some of those might be around the uh, the stop sign, uh, sorry, the speed sign recognition feature. So let's head out on the road and have a look at that. And we'll see if we find anything new in Tesla software version 2020.40.8. So we are on our way to our autopilot route. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, what a very exciting last few days and week it has been for Tesla. Obviously we've got the uh, autopilot rewrite that is uh, hopefully about to start rolling out or, or has already uh, started. But we've also had the huge changes across the board in the Model 3. So obviously in Australia, we've had uh, the price drop, which is which has been well and truly needed due to the changing dollar, which is awesome. But we've also had changes in the configuration as well across the board from the, the standard range plus getting new uh, new kind of aero wheels. We've got the new uh, center console display area. Um, we've got the octo valve no, now being used, which is giving us that extra range. Um, it's just awesome to see, but uh, I'd also like to thank the uh, the few people that have used my referral code over the last uh, kind of few weeks and uh, and months. Um, I really do appreciate uh, the support you guys give me, not only on the channel, but um, also when you use my referral code. Not only do you 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 receive. Uh, 1500 kilometers of free supercharging to get you well on your way with your first Tesla road trip uh, but it also gives me the same as well to help me on my road trips as well so thankfully pretty much most of the road trips I've been on in my Model 3 since I've had it uh, have been consuming that free supercharging credit so um, I'll put a screenshot up of uh, those of you that have used my code uh, again thank you to each and every one of you but just remember if you are ordering a new Tesla, especially now with the new config changes, as well as specifically in Australia with the price drop, just make sure you do follow uh, a registration, uh, sorry, a referral link uh, as part of that process because you cannot add it after the fact. Uh, Tesla do not let you uh, add a referral code after the fact. So you do need to follow the referral link. I always do put mine on the videos that I upload. So if you are stuck 
uh, and don't have anyone else to use, um, feel free to use mine. Like I said before, I really do appreciate it. Um, but just make sure you use anybody's. I know on the Australian uh, Tesla uh, Model 3 Facebook group, there's a random spreadsheet you can use. Um, make sure you use one of those at least. So just so you make sure you get your free supercharging. So like I said, I appreciate it if you use mine, but don't feel obliged to. Um, more than happy for you to uh, kind of spread that love around when it comes to the referral code credit. So it's going to be awesome seeing all of the new Teslas out on the road over the, over the coming months. So that's going to be really, really great to see. Okay, so here we are on the M1 motorway. I do have my destination set as Tuggera Westfield, which is uh, it's probably, oh, I've got the speed, uh, sorry, the reversing cameras up now, but it's probably about five or six kilometers away. Uh, why I wanna go off that exit to test is because um, that actually has kind of two exits in one. So it has not only the exit off the M1 motorway, but then the exit forks into a left and a right, uh, depending on the way you want to go. So uh, what I wanna see is whether uh, the car can actually not only take the first exit, but whether it's actually able to then take the second exit uh, off onto the, uh, off onto the, the, the main road to get to the shopping center. So, um, all right, just doing a lane change there to get around a learner driver. Bit of a phantom brake there for some reason. Uh, now we're wanting to go over again, which we can't do because the car next to me is moving across and we're across. So yeah, it's a bit odd. Sometimes I find the car being quite patient. So in that example where we were overtaking the learner driver, the car did wait quite a while before it moved across or even indicated before it moved across, uh, which is really good. It's really good to see the car waiting before it decides to throw the indicator on. In older software versions, we would find that the car would just literally throw the indicator on even if there was a stream of cars in the in the right hand lane that we need to move across into. So it's nice to see that we're being a bit more patient there, but on the second lane change, uh, it wasn't as patient. It did put the indicator on um, when kind of the car in the right hand lane was in a position whereby there was not enough space for me to move over. So overall, not too bad, worked pretty well, but uh, again, just some, just some minor refinements that I'd like to see that again, hopefully we will start to see uh, with the autopilot rewrite. Okay, moving out of the passing lane, which is great. The car has done that very well for quite a long time now, so I'm very impressed with the way the car decides to move out of the passing lane when we no longer need to be in there, so that's very cool. Uh, we're now approaching our exit is in two kilometers, so I would expect to see the car want to move over to the left-hand lane shortly. In my opinion, two kilometers is probably kind of that magic number. Um, generally, it makes me a little bit nervous when the car wants to do it uh, closer than that, especially when I can see a, a trail full of cars. So. It'll be interesting to see what the car decides to do here, whether it decides to move in front of this white car uh, or whether it slows down. Now I'm going to try and not jump in uh, and assist. I'm going to let the car do this uh, all on its own, which it looks like there's going to be enough, enough space. Okay, pretty good. Again, it left it to probably about 700 meters, which isn't ideal, but we got there nonetheless. And there was also plenty of room, so there was no risk of cutting anyone off. Okay, exit coming up again. We're gonna see an initial exit off the motorway right here, which is good. Oh, that was absolutely perfectly smooth. We also dropped to 90, which is good to see drop down to 80 now so again this is where the exit forks so I can go left which is where I want to go which it's going to do and again smooth as butter absolutely perfectly smooth so that's really really good to see that was absolutely perfect 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go around this roundabout down here and back onto the motorway, which will be our kind of more traditional route that we tend to take. So uh, let's re-navigate onto there and I'll come back to you when I get back on the motorway. Okay, here we go back on the entrance to the M1 motorway. Again, those of you that have watched my videos in the past will recognize this as the the Tugra M1 on-ramp. It's where I normally start most of my tests from. And we're gonna do a merge here onto the motorway, which was really smooth. It is, it is so awesome to see how, just how good autopilot is getting, um, especially navigate on autopilot. It is working so, so well. Uh, and those two exits that we took just then were so smooth, so, Again, I don't take that one too often. Normally I'm taking the one down here and uh, the one I just went on at in the opposite direction. Uh, I did it yesterday, uh, no video shot, but again, it was still that kind of fairly rough jerk as you, as you come off. Um, let's see if these have smoothed out in this version. So, so far autopilot working really well. Not a lot of traffic just due to the time of the day. It's, it's kind of mid morning here, so all of that rush is gone, uh, but we'll see if we've got anything to note in this uh, kind of southward journey. In a few trucks coming up, it'll be interesting to see if the car decides to do any maneuvers to get around them. I'd suggest probably not due to the distance, but we do also have trucks in both the left and middle lane. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, we don't see any, uh, we don't see any, see any movements here and we just take this exit down here. Okay, car slowing down in front of these, uh, sorry, behind these trucks, which is good to see. Again, I wouldn't have wanted to chance getting around them. Uh, exit coming up. Let's see how we go with this one. Indicator on. And yeah, pretty good exit there as well. Uh, probably not quite as smooth as the other ones, but overall that was that was pretty nice. So let's uh, let's navigate back home again, and we'll have a look at the northbound run. Okay, here we go. Autopilot going on. Yeah, still that same left-hand indicator thing, which is a little bit odd. Don't know why we're doing that again. I think it is probably left over for some. Uh, left-hand drive code in autopilot, which isn't great. Uh, merge going on here, cars pretty slow. Uh, I'd expect to probably move over again. Yeah, there we go. Lane next to me is free, as you can see in the reversing camera. I'd expect the car to start to move up. I'm not, uh, I'm not doing anything here, so I'm not increasing the speed. I'm letting the car do this uh, completely on its own. But uh, I would have liked to have seen the car change lanes and uh, maybe accelerate a little quicker uh, than, uh, than it did there. But otherwise it worked pretty well. There was nothing, nothing dangerous or anything of concern there. It worked, worked pretty well in the end. Okay, car indicating that it wants to move over quite early, which I actually probably agree with. Now, myself as a human driver uh, could have broken some road rules and uh, increased speed to probably get in front of that kind of train of cars that you can kind of see in front of me. There's quite a few. There's a bunch of trucks and vans and even the middle lane's pretty heavy. Uh, but if I'm honest, the car's done probably the right thing there. It's moved across uh, quite early to make sure there was no issue with uh, being able to take this exit. So it's definitely gone on the side of caution, which I don't think is a terrible thing, especially when we're talking about kind of getting towards that autonomy stage where cars are, are kind of doing things completely on their own. So I would rather I'd rather the car make a more cautious decision than try and try and rush things. So 
overall that was that was a pretty smart decision so I've got the exit coming up here now I'd expect the indicator to go on in a second and yeah we're still kind of jerky on that exit I don't know what's specific about this exit that causes the car to to kind of be a little bit more aggressive than others but I mean it takes it no problem it's been a quite a long time now since the car has either missed the exit or done, done something quite dodgy but uh, but I think yeah it could that exit could smooth out for some reason the car just takes that probably a little bit rougher uh, than uh, than other exits so but otherwise not too bad so let's go and have a look at some speed signs now on the way home let's see if we can detect any improvements there as well and then we will look to uh, to wrap this video up all right, so here we are in a car park, and what I want to have a look at here is if we still see the the 40 sign on the back of the buses as a speed sign. So as you can see, we've got a bus coming up here. That is, uh, yep, and we do. We saw the we saw the bus appear there with a 40 sign behind it. So yeah, we haven't been able to differentiate that one, uh, but. Uh, fellow Australian Electric Future, I think it was from memory, did tweet this out to Elon uh, to let him know of that specific issue. And he did say that uh, that should be covered in the rewrite, uh, which is going to be an interesting thing to see. So uh, that one is a little bit annoying, especially if you are on autopilot at the time and you're cruising across a, a road that's a single carriageway or single lane and uh, it's say 60 or 70 kilometers an hour and a bus pulls out the car will automatically slow down to 40 uh, because of that sign on the back of the bus so a little bit annoying but that one hasn't been fixed in this version of software so let's cruise around a little bit more and see if there's anything else of note in 2020.40.8 when it comes to speed sign recognition all right, so here we are heading back into a little bit more of a populated town area. So we did detect that speed sign as a 50 sign uh, and the car has dropped its speed automatically because this is a single lane road. We did have some scenarios just then whereby the, the train signals actually slightly detected as a uh, as a traffic light which is definitely not the case but that's okay it didn't uh it didn't actually stop for it which is which is fine so that was all good but interesting that it did come up as a traffic light so overall going well we'll have a look here and see how we go with the go on green functionality which i don't expect there to be any issues so we're just going to follow this suzuki in front through the lights which is good no issues there whatsoever. Okay, another green light here that we will also follow this Suzuki through without an issue. A little bit of a break, but that was okay. Overall, pretty good, pretty good. So we are still in a 50 zone here because it is a populated area. Uh, the speed will increase down here up to, I think it goes to 70. Uh, the car should auto go back up uh, because I did start autopilot in a 60 zone. So it should go back up, but it will be interesting to see if it only goes back up to 60, which was what it was originally set to or whether it will actually go up and increase the speed up to 70, which is the signposted limit. So that'll be a little bit of an inter interesting test. Okay, 70 sign here, we should detect that okay. Yeah, and it's gone up to the 60, which was the max uh, that I was at when I initiated autopilot. So I'm uh, gonna fan and brake here, I'm sure, because that guy decided to pull that right in front of me, absolute champion. So I can now manually increase my speed by the extra 10 kilometers an hour to take me up to 70. So that was that was an interesting thing. I didn't uh, didn't I wasn't aware of what would happen in that specific scenario. So uh, that was all good. So 
I don't know, overall, uh, pretty good software version. Uh, nothing major of note, but I'll take any software update. Any software update is definitely showing improvements whether we see it or not. Uh, so good to see Tesla are still rolling out these software updates uh, in advance of the rewrite. Uh, so that's always really good to see. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've got 2020.40.8, uh, let me know what your experience is. I'd love to hear from you in the comment below. Uh, if you did like this video, uh, please do give it a thumbs up. And as always, uh, you subscribing to my channel does definitely help me out. Uh, and also, if you hit the notification bell as well, you will be notified uh, of future updates. So again, thank you so much for watching. And I really do look forward to chatting with you on my next video. Bye for now.